Hello, this is new episode of Euro Integrators programs, and our guest today is Ambassador of Slovak Republic in Ukraine, uh, Mr. Marek Shafin. Hello, oh. and Sergei Tabilenko, head of National Journalist Union of Ukraine. Oh. Hi, Sergei. Uh, Prime Minister of Ukraine and Slovakia signed bilateral agreement on cross-border uh, cooperation. What does it give to both countries? Uh, it helps many people living, living close to the border to visit each other more often. And uh, it's uh, easier to cross, the, to cross the border, especially now when we have uh, in some uh, part of the year we have uh, quite a huge uh, number of people trying to cross uh, ukrainian slovak border, especially now before Easter, before your Easter. Then many of, uh, you call them Zarobichane, are coming back to Ukraine and after, uh, after Easter they are go, supposed to come again to the Europe. So people who had this uh, card for uh, cross-border cooperation agreement, they can easily uh, cross the border. How many people are using this opportunity? I don't know, several thousand, but I don't know the exact number. Slovakia is a uh, top 20 trade partner uh, for Ukraine and among all European uh, Union. Uh, what is the prospects of this cooperation uh, after uh, your integration agreement and after uh, visa-free regime? Uh, how it influences this cooperation? So yes, uh, Slovakia is the, within the top 20 trade partners of Ukraine and it really, both agreements had some uh, influence, but nevertheless, I just wanted to say that uh, there are not so many Ukrainians working and living in Slovakia as we could guess, as uh, it's a neighboring country. Uh, in Slovakia we are trying to give the same rights to Ukrainians working in our, working in, in, in our economy as the Slovaks have. Mm -hmm. So it means we don't, have, we don't want to hire people, not officially. So their stage in Slovakia, their living in Slovakia has to be official. So they have to ask at the embassies and the premises of our embassy or consulate general and then they have to go to Slovakia. We have, uh, let's say, special control units taking care about, uh, about people working illegally in our country. Mm -hmm. So the law is quite strict and we are trying to, to follow the law. Uh, but smuggling cases uh, still uh, exist, especially of cigarettes. Uh, how does uh, Slovakia deal with the smugglers? We have to be honest that uh, smuggling was and is all the time and there all, all the time will be some cases of smuggling so, across the borders. But we are fighting smuggling together with the Ukrainian side. So there is quite close cooperation with uh, border police and also financial services of Slovakia and Ukraine. Probably I will not go to explain here exactly what kind of cooperation it is, but it's working. And uh, we think that the number of smugglers is going down. Some time ago, Slovakia received a big financial support from European Union. Uh, from your point of view, for which uh, financial help uh, or financial shoulder uh, can uh, Ukraine expect? I think that this question is not for me exactly, but for the chief of uh, EU delegation in Ukraine. Yeah, but from your history? Uh, yeah, we receive uh, financial support and we are still receiving some funds, but uh, I can say that we are supporting, as a Slovakia, we are supporting uh, quite well Ukraine. And since 2014, uh, we sent about uh, the help, about uh, five and a half million euro. It means every Slovak gives one uh, euro to support Ukraine. So, so I think that for such a small country like we are, it's mm, not bad. Uh, two ministers and uh, head of police resigned after first journalist murder in Slovakia. 
at what stage is the investigation now? Do journalists uh, generally feel safe in Slovakia? And how it corresponds to the situation in Ukraine? So let me start from the last point. I mean, I think that journalists can feel very, quite safe themselves in Slovakia. And the case really, yeah, it happened and uh, it's under investigation. We have some people already in jail. Some are investigated, uh, not in uh, jail yet, but uh, as far as I know, this case will, will be solved and uh, guilty will be punished. The former military uh, Miroslav Marček confessed to double murder of journalist and his uh, fiance. Multimillionaire Marian Kochner was accused of the order, this murder. Yeah, seems like this. Sergei, a what can you say about the situation us? Of course, killing a journalist is always shocking news for the journalists around the world and Europe. When we are watching the investigative process and the reaction of civil society, we note that high level of intolerance to violation of the journalist's rights, intolerance to killing as a whole. We saw the massive protests which led to dismissal of high-ranking officials. And now we know that murderer had confessed guilty. So this is an investigation that shows credibility in international society within the country. To compare that story to Ukraine, we would mention the killing of Pavlo Sheremet in the center of Kiev. And this comparison show dishonest efforts of Ukrainian investigators. The International Federation of Journalists and our international partners view that crimes against media representatives, killing of journalists, they are not fully investigated in any countries. In Mexico or any countries it's rather complicated. But here is another question. Do we have real trust to law enforcement or we do not? Unfortunately, the American Committee to Protect Journalists in its report regarding killing of Ukrainian journalist Pavel Sheremet called it like a denial of justice. So they were disappointed by actions and ineffective efforts of investigators. We think it's a shame that the journalists, media investigators and colleagues do this job, find new facts, videos that were not taken into official investigation. For example, video pictures showing one person linked to Ukrainian security service, we have not got the answers still. So solving the matter and finding those who ordered the killing and those who killed is a maximum goal. But today we see just poor efforts to bring it to the end. There is no trust to investigators, and each journalist feels worried. But the successful investigation in Slovakia is a signal to the world community that the freedom of speech would be protected. Those people, those two, two ministers and head of police, uh, they left because they were associated with this multimillionaire who is behind the ordering of this murder, or it was just because they were, it happened uh, during their office? It happened because they took politi political responsibility for mm -hmm. the case. So it was Minister of Interior and police was criticized, but nowadays I think that uh, it was that time and now it is um, one of the main priorities to solve the case, to investigate it till the end and, as I mentioned, to punish the guilty. Сергію, питання до тебе. А як думаєш взагалі, ну, чи можливо в нас ситуація, що в нас будуть брати посадовці якусь політичну відповідальність, навіть якщо вони не пов'язані з замовником вбивці, але просто брати політичну? Чи це можливо зміна тільки через вибори, можливо? I think it would be changed through the election. Maybe we would have some change when we change the level of our political culture, when our authorities would demonstrate 
demonstrate high level of responsibility. Resignations in Slovakia show the high level of political responsibility and political culture. They understand that authorities and government are hired by people to protect their interests and rights, to be effective in what they do and to maintain the values of democracy. Uh, this is what we like here in Ukraine. We do not see such positive signs. I would say our authorities escape public discussion. They are not ready to come and report on investigations, on attacks on journalists, on impunity. As an example, I would uh, not like to criticize Petro Alexievich, uh, but there is an instrument created by Petro Poroshenko, I mean the Council on Protection of Professional Activity of Journalists and Freedom of Speech that was formed by his presidential order. It was organized in 2015 or in the beginning of 2016 and includes police representatives, authorities, members of presidential administration. I am also the member of this council. But the last meeting was held in February 1, uh, so it was one year ago. So it's clear that it doesn't work effectively and it doesn't protect journalists. We need officials to protect journalists in practice, not just in words. If that happens, we would say we trust them in this issue, I mean protection of journalists. Now we admit that most of politicians just fuel in their hostility towards journalists, especially for investigators, and this appears to be a huge challenge for democracy. Uh, politicians should be aware that journalists carry out their mission, they provide people with objective information. So, if the politicians would realize that, it would make the democracy more stable. I'm sure that politicians will have uh, their uh, poli political answers to their uh, uh, positions towards journalists. And actually in uh, Slovakia also uh, pro-European uh, Zuzana Chaputova uh, became a president. Some of the candidates had pro-Russian position. How can you explain this situation? New face and some candidates who has pro-Russian position. Frankly speaking, I don't see that there is any anti-Russian sentiment in Slovakia. This is the first. And, uh, Pro-Russian or anti-Russian? anti-Russian anti and the pro-Russians, I mean, uh, people who are expressing their pro-Russian stances, they are very few. And also, I do not agree that there were many candidates, there were some candidates uh, speaking uh, or expressing themselves in this way, but uh, nevertheless, the strongest candidates we had, all of them were pro-European. I mean, also uh, elected president Ms. Chaputova and uh, another candidate was Maro Shevchovic, who is uh, our commissioner mm -hmm. in the EU. So both candidates who came to the final were pro-Europeans. So nobody can say that uh, Slovakia is changing the course or something. We are still pro-European, pro-NATO. We are members of uh, European Union, members of NATO, mer members of Europe, uh, of uh, Eurozone. So we change our currency for Euro. It helps us a lot in our in development of our economy. I, actually, how you can explain these new faces? Yeah, because uh, it's also the same situation in also, Ukraine now. It's. Uh, in our case, it's new case, but it seems to me that uh, he will continue in the, uh, in the politics of uh, today's president, Andrei Kiska. Mm -hmm. Because even he came to congratulate her after she won the election. Mm -hmm. So they seem to be very close. Mm -hmm. And she was not very known in Slovakia, but she was known in, uh, in environmental uh, sphere. And uh, she is a lawyer. She was also known in, uh, I mean, between the lawyers. Mm -hmm. Okay.
but she was not very public, let's say. In Ukraine, we know the people wish to see new faces and desire to see renewed political style. Uh, such results show the people are fed up with the old style politicians. People are also tired of constant fights between politicians. I don't want to point out who is stronger in those battles. Most Ukrainians hope the political situation would get better after coming new persons and faces. That's why they voted for Zelensky. In these elections, uh, there was a pro-Russian candidate, Yuri Boyko. He is a supporter of developing closer ties with Russia. And today, after summing up the result of voting, we could say Zelensky provided some electoral mission, as he gained sympathies in the regions where, according to polls, people would vote for pro-Russian candidate. But Zelensky had gained the votes there. He fulfilled his mission, he gave the hope to all Ukrainians, and this hope was rather pro-European. It was the confirmation of the pro-European choice of Ukrainian people. Yes, I would say Volodymyr Zelensky acted like a European politician. He had signed declaration for protecting uh, all freedom of speech. This is the public commitment to guarantee the freedom of speech uh, to protect rights of the journalists. This declaration was developed by the Union of Journalists of Ukraine. It was supported by the International Federation of Journalists, by non-government organizations in Ukraine. It was a commitment to respect and protect the journalists. So I would say in the right moment that Ukraine had elected the pro-European president who declares support of freedom of speech and European choice. What about another candidate? Uh, has he signed such a declaration? Uh, 13 candidates have supported our declaration. This list includes Yulia Tymoshenko, Anatoly Hrysenko, Andrei Sadovy, Nalivaychenko, Smishko. But unfortunately, the current president, Petro Poroshenko, was not among them. He had just ignored our invitation to report on the freedom of speech issue. The head of Slovak parliament does not, uh, he said that he doesn't support uh, sanctions against Russia and he said that he was counseling something about capturing uh, sailors in the uh, Azov Sea. Uh, what is in overall position of uh, Slovak government and Slovak parliament towards uh, sanctions and towards Russia? What I see, I would like not to comment the expression of um, Chief of Parliament of Slovakia, but I want to inform you that there is an agreement between Parliament, uh, President, and the government of Slovak Republic that the foreign policy is one only. Mm -hmm. So, when it comes to the real, real uh, to the real, po decision. real politic, I mean, there is only one foreign policy, and nothing has changed on the Slovak position. So, we are against the annexion of uh, Crimea. We are against the aggression and we are supporting uh, all the sanctions. So, as I already once say, said, uh, we are members of NATO and EU and we are completely and fully fulfilling our obligations, what we have. Uh, despite the official position of Slovakia, uh, approximately 10 Slovak uh, member of parliament illegally visited Crimea last year. How much uh, do these individual actions influence our relations from your, from your point of view? I am not sure if there were 10 because this is what I heard from you only, but uh, nevertheless I knew about uh, some of uh, members of parliament visited Crimea. Ministry of Foreign Affairs is consulting them, is consulting members of parliament, but uh, we cannot they are aware about what can happen, about the consequences. You know, they are members of parliament, so they are doing 
and uh, talking according their own. They are persuaded, and so they are according their own will. Yeah, we can say. And uh, I think that Ukrainian side does understand our position, and uh, such a visit do not have, I can say, any influence on uh, relationship between Ukraine and Slovakia. Uh, last November, uh, some fake about uh, Ukrainian borders that they are not existing uh, was uh, distributed through social networks in Slovakia. Who could be interested in the distribution of such uh, disinformation from your point of view? First of all, we should understand that now we are facing a new reality, a new threat of different types of the hybrid war. Of course, Russia is behind this. Russia generates many fakes against Ukraine as a state. Uh, that's made uh, to maintain some anti-Ukrainian critical views uh, abroad to impose their view on the situation in Ukraine and to keep Russian foreign policy. It's clear that Russia is strong in this disinformation campaign. They use it like a weapon. Uh, Russia tries to put methods in many countries around the world. But Ukraine should carefully watch these threats and be able to react immediately. Uh, we should learn how to tackle that and uh, see where it comes from. But anyway, we should stay calm with no hysteria if some cases occur. There are some irregular situations happen. For example, one downloads the incorrect map of Ukraine in Internet and uses that. In such cases, we don't have to treat it like a crime. We have to conduct an open dialogue with our partners. I think today Europe and the USA, all Western world uh, needs correct and true information and they want people to get the right information and restrict the fakes. Uh, so we have to join our efforts to fight these threats which come from Russia. We do respect uh, Ukraine territorial sovereignty and independence in, within the internationally confirmed borders, it means you cannot find such a map in Slovakia because our maps of Ukraine are till now with Crimea also. Mm -hmm. Slovakia is an uh, important uh, gas exporter to Ukraine and you really helped us in the most difficult period. Uh, but in the same time now is uh, Nord Stream 2 uh, is building, in the process of building. What is your position towards it? I think that according to Nord Stream 2, we, we are in the same boat with uh, Ukraine. It's our, in our interest also to continue transit gas and uh, crude oil through the territory of Ukraine, because both of our countries are transit countries. And as you know, we are still helping Ukraine with uh, receiving uh, natural gas, thanks to a reverse, what we built, I mean, reverse line, what we built on the Slovak territory in 2014. I guess that about 90% of uh, both gas abroad, uh, Ukraine is buying in Slovakia yeah. still. Thanks, Mr. Ambassador, for joining us. Thanks, Sergei, for coming to our studio. Thanks to all who watched us. See you next week.